Hello everyone, this is Bufu. And this is Crafty. And we're here to talk about a book. Book. Man, my favorite. <laughs> yes, we both love books. And uh, what's the name of the book that we have for today? Oh, well, it is uh, Old Man's War. Um, which, as I've recently heard from someone, it's supposed to be like a sci-fi classic. Yeah, I think I know that guy, yeah. yeah so, uh, I really tried to find a nice sci-fi. Uh, and I checked out a few lists and this book popped up like on a 4 out of 5 lists and I decided to give it a try. And it is a recent book, like it's uh, 2005, I think, so isn't that a bit... I don't know, uh, it feels a bit early to call yeah. something from 2005 a, a classic. This, this this can be another another discussion at all for how how much time until a book is considered a classic, a book or a movie. Yeah, but regardless of that, it is it is like a fun sci-fi romp, I guess. Um, I enjoyed it while reading, although do I, I have some, uh, some other thoughts uh, after reading. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But yeah, first of all, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, John Scalzi's. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this uh, this right. John Scalzi's Old Man's War, which is the first book in a series of, um, I think, like uh, close. A lot. Yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot of books. There are, uh, of books, I yeah. think, five in the main main series, and then there are a bunch of auxiliary so short stories. Um, yeah, at the same universe, uh, in the same universe, there are a lot of books. Yeah, so um, I had never heard of this story of this book uh, before. Well, I have heard of, I had heard of it, but I never, um, especially wanted to sit down and read it until I got a recommendation from you. Uh, I think you were about yep. uh, a third or a, or a, f For, uh, a halfway, forty percent, yeah, somewhere around. Yeah, there. in and you were like, yeah, this is great, and I'm like. Fuck yeah, sci-fi is great. Let's see, let's see what this is about. Yeah, yeah. So, what was it about? Well, it was about old people. I guess. Yeah, that's that's what I imagined <laughs> when someone told me. Uh, when someone... Or was it? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah, we can get to that, but uh, it's uh, and uh, let's 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 just clear this out. Uh, this is gonna be uh, very spoiler. Uh, spoilery review. So I guess uh, before we do spoilers, let's uh, let's just uh, do a quick summary, like overall our impressions, and then yeah, we'll a, do a quick spoilers. Summary is good. Uh, because the book is actually worth reading on its own. I would say that if Definitely. you're a sci-fi fan, uh, this is a very decent uh, sci-fi. It's uh, short overall. Um, it's uh, well paced. And it has a sense of fun to it. Mm, absolutely, there's very nice sense of humor uh, in the book, which uh, you know, believe it or not, not every author can. I I can I have. fucking believe that man. <laughs> I believe yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, and I a nice humor in a book is is not something that you know occurs in every book, mm. and just. And a good sense of humor at that, it's it's very hard to achieve. So, uh, let's let's just give like a quick overview of the book. Uh, it's uh, about um, well, an old man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. As the title. Well, can, can I can yeah. I just can I, can I just start with with something else? Uh, I mean, the the title is so catchy. The title is amazing. Title, like the title is amazing. The title. title is so evocative. Like when you hear Just "Old Man's War," you 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 want to to read that story. Like you want to see. Yeah, this this just sounds sounds interesting because it, it sounds like uh, it's it's not something uh, ordinary. Yeah, and it's a sci-fi old man's war. So you immediately have a like a um, I guess a lot of. Uh, hope for a story like this. You have a lot of expectations. The, the, the whole, the, only the title it just and it starts to provoke uh, thoughts in you immediately. Yeah. Because what is this all about? Um, um, so, 
with so 10 out of 10 the title is great <laughs> good job we're finished uh, i'm going to bet that this book basically uh became a bestseller entirely on its title because uh, i have to agree i have to agree yeah and it's kind of an amazing title sells really well and it's kind of unfortunate that the title is a lie but uh yeah spoilers the title is, the a, title lie. is a lie whoops <laughs> So, actually, let's like let's just get into spoilers because this is a book that uh, the meat of it cannot be discussed without discussing spoilers. So yeah, just, just there is no way. There is no yeah, way. Yeah, because uh, unfortunately, uh, it, the premise it's it's basically a lie. Uh, when you when you hear old man's war, you imagine an old man going to war, and in a I, sense I actually uh, f- for a second uh, uh, for a second I, I imagined also that it could be a, a metaphorical war also yeah. in a way yeah but well no we, not that, so that's much. not what we get here uh, yeah. what we actually get is so it's the future again um, yep. as it tends to be and what what seems to be the order of the day for old people in the future is when they get to 75 um, and they have lived the full life. One of the, yeah. the common choices yeah. that they would make is sign up for the army. Um, so and They actually, uh, if I remember correctly, they actually sign up at, at 65. They choose it, yeah. if they want. Yeah, they give, a, yeah. they give their to, consent. To give out, uh, and they give their... They, they give out 10%. And they're like, yeah, I would like to sign up for the army in 10 years. Um, yeah. But the, why would someone choose that? Well, supposedly the army is uh, capable of rejuvenating you. So you sign yeah, up... Yeah, but, but no one knows this for sure. No. no one knows this for sure. There is absolutely no information out there what actually happens yeah. with you after you join the army. So let's, There is no information. Let's give like a quick summary of how uh, the story progresses. Uh, we start with uh, an old man that uh, has buried his la- his wife uh, she has passed before him and he yeah. has no attachment anymore to earth earth incidentally seems to be mostly similar in technology to current day earth pretty similar yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty similar to um we have a space ele- elevator and that's about it like as far as technology goes we have a space elevator and we are told that there is a space uh, colony defense, the SDF. Yeah. Uh, no, no, not space. What? I I think I just uh, mangled well, the name of the. Just let's let's simplify. It. The army has the tech, a yeah. lot of tech. Uh, the space army, however. The space, the space army. army. Yeah, it's a space army. They have the tech, and yeah, and you can join them at at seventy five. And you can yeah, you can join at seventy five, and uh, you're signing up for a. Uh, two to ten year term of service so people expect that um, well if they're recruiting people at 75 and they expect them to fight for 10 years they should have some way of rejuvenating people so that's the expectation yes. but again it's a bit uh, iffy how you would get people to sign up for that without any information because until you sign up you don't know what happens in the army and no one who yeah. signs up for the army ever um, returns back returns. to Earth. Like, they go into space and no that's that. Returns. They yes. never fucking return. So, I find it amazing that the army has managed to incentivize people to do this. Well, I think it has to do with this with this age that comes. I mean, at 75, I guess, you've li- lived a long life and you want something new and maybe you're more willing to experiment and you've got nothing to lose in a sense i guess and yeah you've got nothing to do you have kids and grandkids yeah no most people will yeah so you've lived a full life you've you yeah you've lived a few a full life uh and i mean i think that's one of the problems with uh let's say young soldiers you know they always look to return to their family to their to their kids I know, and here you're just told, well, you're not going to return. You know, this is a one-way journey. Yeah. So you either go or you don't go. It's it's your own choice. 
if you in and there is this exploration thing because yeah because you go into the unknown find something new you go into the yeah, unknown uh yeah you're going to the unknown that's the thing yeah you, you don't know what what's going on there you don't know what's gonna happen to your body and what you're gonna see yeah and it's it sounds like an adventure and again it sounds like an adventure we're back yeah. at the premise like old man's war so an old man goes on an adventure into the unknown deep space and and then we get yep. space marines and then full, fully fully fledged yeah. space marines so yeah. basically uh the actual story of the of the book is uh, space marines the another one um yep. because as soon as you as an old man go into space on the ship that ships you to a boot camp or space boot camp uh, yeah, to the space station. Sp- yeah, um, what they do is basically they have pre-made uh, a enhanced clone of you. So ten years ago, you signed up that you wanted to go to the army. You gave them their, you gave them your blood, DNA. Yeah, yeah. and your approval in your DNA. Yes, and what they've done is they made an artificial body for you that's based on your DNA plus enhancements. And you're now a yeah, space a lot marine. Of the yeah. And you're now green. And you're now a green space marine. So yeah. immediately, like you're no longer an old man. You're sure, like you're. It's an old man's consciousness, but it's it's inside, uh, like a new shiny space marine body. Yeah. This uh, this, however, brings another problem that I have uh, is that, uh, well. Good, they change your body, but you know the conscious, uh, con- your consciousness is still of an old man, and how exactly uh, you're gonna see your body and how you're gonna feel in it? Because l- let's let's say what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what I'm trying to say very, uh, awkwardly. very, yeah, very awkwardly, uh, is that. If you, let's say, you're a, you're a fat man and you suddenly uh, lose a bunch of weight. Let's say... I can, I can dream you, of that, you yes. Like 50, 60 kilograms of weight. And uh, you're, you're suddenly a very fit guy. And you, you do this in like an year. But your mind still doesn't perceive your body as that of a fit guy. That's, that's something... That's something that just happens. You know, people don't just start perceiving themselves as uh, as young and capable. And they just will cling to old habits. And, uh, yeah, so, you know... So what happens is that uh, you have an old man inside of a bad body of a, uh, basically an Olympian uh, or beyond yeah, an he's Olympian. Not gonna just, yeah, so, he's not going to just start to, to jump out, you know, excitingly and, and do... And act like a twenty-five-year-old. Oh, well, I guess you would uh, for a for a while, and for a while, for a while, yeah. Uh, I I do I did kind of like the idea that the soon of uh, so there was there was a ship full of old, old people, and as soon as they get their new bodies, everyone starts fucking immediately. So no, I mean this is pretty reasonable. <laughs> actually, this I find this yeah, pretty reasonable. That was funny. It's good. The big problem I have actually with uh, that transition is that. Uh, the old man barely felt like an old man before the transition, and after the transition, there was nothing that indicated to me that this was a person of seventy-five year old, uh, of seventy-five year age. Yeah, uh, yeah that's he true. Did not behave in any way that made me think old person or like experienced person. Like I, I never felt that he brought any experience of life with him, uh, much less some of the people that uh, he deals with. Um, there is a thing. He was a writer. He was a writer. If I yeah, if he I he wrote correctly. like uh, commercials. So I I expected him to like write stuff, <laughs> you know, and uh, basically basically to have a uh, kind of you a, know, a more set of, of pers- a writer's perspective uh, uh, maybe, on things. Maybe to have a personality and established interests and works that you pick up over 75 fucking years you know yeah that uh, sounds very natural and the people uh him in particular it feels like maybe a 40 
40 something guy. Maybe, yeah. But different. Because he's kind yeah. of mature acting at times, but not too yeah, much. But... Um, yeah, and you pe- can be mature at, uh, at 30 also. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's no telling. You know, it depends on person to person. But And, yeah. and the people around him Definitely. don't act yeah. mature. Like, they don't act like people of uh, that have lived a full lifetime. They act uh, inadequate. Um, and uh, a, a gripe that I have with the book is that uh, every time the main character doesn't like someone, like uh, <laughs> a squad mate, because he behaves like uh, an ass, um, the squad mate conveniently dies. So basically, it's like a, yeah, every time I've missed that. I've missed that. But uh, you pointing, yeah, you pointed out this to me, and uh, yeah, you're absolutely right about this. So at the beginning of the book, uh, when he's an old man, he meets like a fat slob that's yeah. unpleasant and farts and makes good jokes and all that. Um, and I was thinking, okay, that's. Uh, that's maybe a setup. Like that's the sort of character that seems bad at first, but then they became fr- become friends or something like that. No, he immediately dies. Like he he has a heart attack because because he's so fat, um, and dies. And that's it's like, that. Uh, it's like the book. Ah, he was behaving bad. Now he's dead. Uh, later, there there is another squad mate of his after the transition, uh, his first battle. And he became behaves like an ass, and I'm like, okay, so this one feels completely expandable. And then he is completely expandable. Um, so there is literally anyone that behaves badly towards the main character uh, kind of gets the axe. Yep. Right? I, I'm trying to remember someone that be- behave, behaved bad towards him and didn't die. And I'm not sure there, there is even one of those. I think, I think this was, yeah, two people. Well... There was the girl at the start, but that's that's a totally different story. Yeah. We're going to get to that. Mm. So, as far as character progression goes... Um... So, yeah, they're old men, and they don't act like old guys. They, they don't have any special quirks and something that indicates 75 years of experience, you know? Yeah. And... So basically, you know, they, they don't feel like old people at all. And we're going to get to the training and I have even more problems there. Yeah. The thing is, um, what is the reason in universe for the army to select old people? Well, we are told that because they're old, they don't uh, like they, they have uh, a sort of a uh, I guess attachment to the human species, and they want to protect them. Yeah, bigger attachment, and they've lived a full life. But I it, have it no idea. Sound... Yeah, that doesn't work. Very convincing. Like, why can't they do with younger people the same thing? Like and, there, there is, and and we we come here to a, another problem that's that's pretty big because people, seventy five year old people. You you don't teach an old dog <laughs> new tricks. Yep. I mean, it, it's just you, you can't. That, that's why that's why you teach young people. So you know to perform these things. I, I think for for these people to adapt to their new bodies to to the army itself, they're gonna need five years at least. At least five years. I I cannot give a judgment to that. Like I have no idea, but it does feel like. Uh... When like the reason the army usually takes one young people in is because they're malleable. You can uh, train them you can better. Manipulate them, yeah, and you can actually manipulate. Them and you can manipulate them. easier. Yeah. So yeah. what we're and train them easier. So you know what what you're supposed to do. Yeah, what we're told here, like there was, there's a this throwaway, throwaway line about, uh, oh, they're too hot headed, like young people are too, too hot headed, and we can't have those. I have seen no indication that the soldiers that we are presented in, that were that are supposedly old people are especially more mature or well behaved. Um, so there was the third person, like uh, like the first person that dies when the char- the main character doesn't like him is the fat guy. The second person yeah. is like his first squad mate at his, at, at his first battle. Uh, he was like cocky and jumping out of cover and shouting at the 
crab monsters that were attacking them. We'll get, we'll, we will get to the aliens, believe you me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to them. Yeah. We'll get to them. The third person that uh, the main character didn't like and immediately died was an old senator that was like, "Oh, we should, you, we should, we should communicate with these species and not." Like exterminate them. We should. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, about that one. We should yeah. try to find peace, um, which actually was a very reasonable argument because, as far as we see from this book, um, yeah. Why? Why should the aliens always be bad? Yeah, we don't see a single uh, live alien that's friendly. We we are told of a picture. Of an alien that's friendly, and that's that's uh like in the whole book with when we supposedly have met met uh, dozens of uh, intelligent civilizations, we have m- met one friendly one, and we only get a picture of it and never any interaction with it, huh? and it's like uh, this uh, deep sea uh, crab that likes to eat plankton. Well, that's boring. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on. Let's, let's move on from that. Let's move on. Uh, who, who wants to exchange like ideas with an um, alien species that has had a completely unique um, evolutionary path and a different yeah, take if, on, if on the universe? If it's not fighting, it's not interesting. So basically, yeah, the whole book is fighting. So uh, I wanted to to get back to the senator that was like, "Well, we should find peace." Um, the space marines, the human space marines, invade the home world of uh, alien race that's squirrels, like giant squirrels. Okay. That's that's in the book. I have not made, made that up. But there are Maybe stupid lying, things in lying. the book. But we, we <laughs> so we invade the squirrel people and we raise their fucking home world. Like uh, we destroyed their st- their starports, we destroyed their industry, and we're in their biggest uh, city on planet, killing their everything basically. Like destroying. So this is so this isn't. Uh, uh, the idea is that we're battling the other alien species for resources. Yeah. For control over you know inhabitable planets. Yeah. You know that we can make expansions, and suddenly. Oh, you see, we are in an invasion. This is an invasion. This yeah. this doesn't have anything to do with resources. Oh. This is about annihilation yeah, of a race. Yeah. What it's the like, hell? Oh, we, we saw an opportunity because these, this species is a bit weaker than us. And uh, we, we can just uh, get in, um, hit their home world and cripple them for decades to come from space travel. And thus uh, take over their territory. In the meantime, I mean, if 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 we let, let, let's say let's say really that all of the races are battling for resources. Let's just say this is their their whole motivation. Okay, you know, then there should be some type of rules, you know, that say don't invade the planet of the other species. Where is the space, at least like the, the home planet, yeah. Where is the, the planet, Space yeah. Geneva Convention is what I'm wanting to Yeah, ask. the Space Geneva Convention. And if we don't have a Space Geneva Convention, we get to the big aliens here. Because we have an alien race that is the best. Yeah. Uh, Be- uh, yeah. And they have a very interesting way of thinking. And... Let, let, let's let's just let's just talk. About I, I just wanted the, the I just wanted to, yeah. to finish the story about the senator okay. that went to the squirrels and he's like squirrels. Oh yeah, you yeah, should yeah. not yeah. fight. Um, and the squirrels melted him. Uh, well, well, <laughs> That's wasn't, what this, wasn't this for the console or no? If I, I do, I remember correctly. Uh, uh, wasn't he trying to make peace with the console? No, he was trying. To, he was trying to make peace peace with the oh, squirrels. with the squirrel. Um, okay. So uh, maybe, maybe. I, so yeah. yeah so it's that. like every even even the one character that's kind of reasonable and wants to make peace. Um, like he he does it in the worst possible way because we have literally just bombed their home world. But he 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 is one that the the main character is like I don't like that guy, and then he immediately gets melted. Um, so yeah, basically every adversary that the ma- that the main character meets. Gets killed by fate. The axe. 
like fate steps in and it, it's like yes you don't like that guy i'm going to take care of him yeah three people three people mm -hmm. and i mean i guess the first two were you know annoying but this one the third one really the, the guy that offered peace in the oh, book, but, is but a, see, no peace, see, this is a war. But you see, he was a politician before he made the transition yeah, to Space Marine. So because bad. he was a politician, the army he's is a good. bad guy. Yeah, the, the army yeah, is the good, army politicians is good. are bad. Uh, politicians, yeah. politicians that speak of peace get melted. Yep. That's, that's the kind of the credo of this fucking book. Um, so let's talk... Before, but this before, isn't the biggest problem. Yeah, before we go book. to, to yeah. your stuff, let's talk just a bit about uh, the alien species that we meet as far as what they look like and how they behave. Uh, we'll get to the consul last. Because yeah, the consul, consul for last. They're, yeah, they're actually last. The, the ones that are kind of interesting. Uh, I want to talk first... They're the only one that are interesting. Well, yeah, they're yeah. The, exactly, they're the only ones. Um, I want to talk about... Um, so we have the squirrels. Nah. Oh, we have the squirrels. I mean, squirrels are literally just explained as looking like big squirrels and they smell bad when they kill them. That's all the yeah. explanation we get of an yeah, entire species. Because we smell very species. good when we kill them. Yeah. Like that, that's all when we get. Killed. Yeah. Um, then there was the uh, little people. They were literally like one inch uh, humanoid uh space fairing Thingies. Thingies. Yep. and what the space marine did was step on them yeah we, we trample over them yeah we're the good guys here guys um we yeah. when we we're fighting with a with a race that's literally as uh as tall as your smartphone yeah and that's what we did like we stepped on them even even the main character is disgusted well but, i mean you know that doesn't help a no. lot <laughs> No, it don't. It. I mean, I don't know. He's trying to to show the bad side of the army, but generally the army. I mean, is the good okay, guys can, here. Can we so, just uh, take one step back as a and look at this from a writing perspective? You want to show that your character, that your main character, is starting starting to lose faith in his battle. You want to show that he's fighting with inferior opponents. So what do you do? Big men. I guess, like uh, yep. one inch tall people, and that's oh, we're so evil and big, and they're so small and small. Hmm. I guess, like, oh. isn't this the ultimate cop out? Like, how, how maybe, 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 uh, I guess, uh, making us fight against baby deer would have been too much. So we actually fight against actual deer in the book. That's what we do. We kill deer. There is a there is a there is an alien race that looks like deer. There it is, guys. Simple explanations. I know. So I got squirrels, deers. And the book is and not the small people. Yeah, the book uh. is not anti-war, by by the way. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not anti-war. It it's... just uses. Uh, the most and it blatant be. shortcuts possible for, oh, uh, like I need I need to show this thing, so let's let's make the people tiny, or I need to show that uh, sometimes uh, cute looking aliens are dangerous, so the deer eat people, like they literally eat mm. people. I would have preferred maybe less aliens because uh, it would make a little bit more sense. Yeah, it, you know, it, let's say it, let's say that there is humans, there is another race, and there is the console. If there were three races, it, it would make a little bit more sense because you're essentially battling against one race. Uh, it's 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 insinu it's level uh, It's insinuated that there are dozens of races. Um, yeah, and we just we just see that we're fighting one, with no, no, a few of them. Uh, we just see a few of them, mm. and they're all fighting with each other. Yeah, everyone is fighting with everyone, and everyone is about the same level of technology, because which is completely impossible. You know, science fiction. I mean, this is this yeah. is the best. Uh, this is one of the best science fictions, right? So it's it's so much science in it. Should be. Um. Should be. <laughs> Uh, and uh, let's talk about uh, you made a point because uh, we made a discussion before this and uh, 
Yeah, you made a very good point of uh, we are attacking uh, a home planet. Yeah, we're attacking home worlds of uh, several species in this several yep. races uh, in this uh, in this book. So basically, what I mean. Attacking yep. the whole what world exactly? of, a, of an alien race should be like, the biggest fucking thing that the human race would ever do. Like, attacking the home world uh, basically implies threatening annihilation for an entire yeah, the, uh, the, race. The book, the book, however, makes it sound like like a like a just a, just another Monday. Yeah. You know, it's like, just a regular oh, mission. It's, it's, oh, it's just gonna it's, attack their own planet again, It's just military guys, tactics. You know? It's just military tactics. Like, let's attack no, a homeworld. No, no, it's not. You're attacking the homeworld. And and why isn't anyone attacking Earth? Yeah, no one fucking bothers with Earth. Earth is completely unprotected because, as we stated in the beginning, Earth's uh, technology is way behind anything else in the universe. And this makes zero sense. Why wouldn't you use the best technology on your planet? What? No, the, why? Yeah, yeah, why isn't our home world? Why isn't Earth uh, advanced? Uh, there is mention of another star that's uh, supposedly more advanced than Earth. And there is like one line. There is a single line in the book that's like, Oh, uh, I guess this is the center of human civilization now. It's literally one line in there. And why is the center of human civilization not the origin point of human civ- civilization? There isn't a reason. Yeah. Like we've never given one, but uh, I guess it would make it less re- relatable for the per- first part of the book. So the book takes a very utilitarian approach to writing. It's like whatever works for this part, I'm doing it, and it doesn't matter if it makes sense in the grand scheme of things. It's the sort of book that um, the more you think about it, the less sense it makes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the thing is, you know, if if they can come, if they can come toward, they're just gonna obliterate everything. Yeah, like we have uh, bas- basically current age technology, uh, and they have space lasers, so <laughs> we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, uh, if I don't know, there is there isn't even a mention uh, on in the beginning of the book when, when the main character is on Earth that you know the Earth was attacked by aliens. There is no mention. Of this. So there's mention of uh, human wars. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's like oh, we had like just recently, like uh, twenty years ago, we had a huge war between India and the U.S. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so 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 let let me get this straight. So we're in a constant battle and uh, yeah, constant colonization race uh, for space. Race, yeah, with with racing and battling with other races, and on Earth, we are still battling uh, between us. I mean, this. I'm sorry. This is impossible. Well, this is impossible. It's kind of possible, but um, like I... the thing is, if we have if we have a, a, a unified enemy, you know, this this is gonna like aliens? M- more yeah, like like fucking aliens. This is more or less gonna gonna quench all the conflicts, at least military conflicts uh, on Earth. At if least you're, after the if first you're space at a bombing. threat in a, yeah. Yeah, if if you have been space bombed or you know that aliens can attack at any time, you're not gonna waste your resources to fight uh, between between nations. By the way, it just the way that warp technology works in this uh, universe, it's, it's it's super scary. It's super scary. Yeah, it's super scary. It's like you can warp at any point in the galaxy from any point, so there is no like maximum jump distance. It doesn't seem like there is. Um, yeah. uh, as long as you, as long as you can calculate it, and it seems like you can, basically. Um, and there is, we're going to get to that. Uh, we're we're saying this a lot, but yeah, uh, <laughs> there there is uh, no way to detect when a ship when a ship is going to jump in, and around Earth there are, there is no protection at all, uh, no fleet or oh. anything. Uh, so basically, is, how, how can there be no fleet? Around Earth, just how can you leave your your planet without a fleet? I mean, this 
this this army is total shit. Dude. They should fire everyone. <laughs> like their home planet no, is unprotected. It's the Kaoni Defense Force. Like that's the name of the space mar- space marines. It's the Kaoni Defense yeah. Force. So they, t- they defend the colonies and like fuck Earth. Yeah, fuck Earth. We, you know, we just only get supplies our soldiers us. from here, but it's like... Yeah, we only get our soldiers from there. Yeah. Nothing big or anything. Yeah. They mention uh, 20, I think 20 million, uh, 20 billion people is the population of uh, Earth plus the colonies, I think. Plus the colonies, uh, is it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't I think, remember yeah, that I number. I think they mentioned this, but yeah, it doesn't matter. They, they don't say uh, an exact, uh, you know, number for Earth or for the colonies, but, you know, if we say that there is around seven, seven, eight, you know, billions, you know, if, if it's the same Earth with the same technology and the same population, you know, the colonies have a lot, although I don't. I'm not actually sure how the colonies can have more than Earth, but probably yeah. not like the way it's presented. Yeah. yeah, probably they have a lot more. So, what is this book about? It's about um, a uh, an old old man that becomes uh, young in a new body and then just takes a job at the military, uh, starting from inf- infantry. And for the most part, there there isn't like an overarching story. It's just following him in the military, and it's yeah, not it's, it's interesting. From perspective. Like the 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 space marine stuff is very basic. Yeah, absolutely basic. There's there is nothing. We're fighting space squirrels and one inch man. Yeah, we're fighting. Yeah, get get hyped, guys. We're fighting the squirrels again. And we farting like. The biggest enemy of humanity is deer people, like people that look like uh, deer, you know, from Bambi. We're fighting fucking Bambi. Okay. That's it. Oh, and Bambi eats people. Is it? Um. What? <laughs> okay. Uh. So. Well. Oh yeah, that, that's that's the situation that's presented in the book. Yes. And uh, let's let's talk about the, you know, enough humans. You know, I, I'm bored of these humans. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk about the the console. So the console are the console. basically the only cool aliens in the whole book. Yeah, the only let's let's call them the only real aliens. Yeah, they they, they, they the only one that feels like mysterious. They feel like they're mysterious. Someday I will <laughs> learn to speak, but it's it won't be today. Um, they yeah. have a, a uh, an air of mystery to them. They have uh, um, sort of like an aura of uh, something bigger of that they actually are uh, more than us in a way. We this is the race that we actually communicate with. Yeah. You know, and the communication with the other races is pretty much non existent. Yes. And we, yeah, we communicate with this race. This is an ancient race. And uh, well, they have pretty interesting, pretty interesting habits, I would say. So the, like, the first uh, communication that we have with them is basically uh, they come to a colony and they will perform a ritual and they will literally fight over the colony and yeah. of course the main character is like hmm i can sense there is something complicated going on here and it seems that no one else in the fucking military has ever thought to fucking use their translator to listen to the chants uh, to the songs uh, you have a computer in your head that translates you have a computer. Yeah, that translates everything and, and like basically no one has figured out that the consul are uh, making our fighting as a way of a religious fight uh, that's meant but, to baptize planets and but they but they have figured out that the console have great technology and interesting enough whoever they fight they fight them with uh, with technologies that are on the same level yeah. as the race that they're fighting on yes yeah. this, this this is very interesting so the console basically are um the strongest race in the book at this point 
I don't know what's yeah. up with later books, but in this one, uh, they have a Dyson Sphere. You can basically wipe out every race. So they have, uh, they, the yeah, thing. they have built a Dyson Sphere. Um, if you don't know what a Dyson Sphere is, that's basically a solar array that completely envelops a sun. It's a way to yeah. harness 100% of uh, the, uh, the output energy. of your star, which is, you know, like a sci-fi dream, basically. Uh, being able to do something like that and the console are deeply religious race um, so what they they do is they go to the colonies of lesser races and they will do ritual fighting in a way uh, they will use the exact same level of technology as what you have to make the fight fair and try to save your soul to into their reincarnation cycle so one day you may be reborn as a true person, as a consul. Yeah, one day will be you be as good as them, you know. Yeah. But it's not going to be today. So they fight and, you in uh, battle and that way they guide your spirits to reincarnation as one of them. Um, because I think I think they fight you in battle because uh, they see that this is what the laser ra races are doing. I mean, that's the only thing that they're doing. I mean, they're fighting. I mean, essentially, it, from their point of view, it, these these are just just kids. It, that are just it does just seem playing around. it does seem that uh, no, uh, like the army has the idea that consul are doing this as a sort of sport. Um, as far yeah. as I understood, it, the consul are doing this because fighting itself is deeply ingrained ingrained into their uh, religion. So. They was it? yes, uh, so they see a fair fight as a way to elevate the lesser uh, the 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 lesser uh, space races. Yeah. So it's a way for them to to help them out. Like um, the, there is a one very short conversation with the consul when we get to ask a few questions. And they say that they love all races and they want to help them out uh, reach the spiritual levels and the spiritual height of the council. Which I thought was very interesting uh, because for the most part everyone in the human army is an atheist. And almost every single um, intelligent... Alien species had a religion. Yeah. So I'm not sure what the the book was trying to say with uh, that. Human human master is that's the thing. I guess so. Kind of oh, they're dumb for having a, a religion. That that was kind of implied. I think I think, the, I think in in consoles, I think in the uh, consoles, uh, situation though, it's it's a little bit different. I mean they they've progressed so far. Uh, scientifically, that they basically, uh, you know, that this is a little bit of, of backwards thinking because they've basically hit hit the, the the ceiling of technology. Yeah, and they don't, they cannot progress anymore the, with their technology. But they don't care about it that much. Like uh, technology yeah. seems like a means to an end. They're a deeply spiritual sort of uh, yeah. Now, race. now they're now they're spiritual. Yeah. And I find this very interesting. So if alien races and like the, the most advanced fucking race in the universe it's is deeply spiritual, maybe they know something? Like what would be like isn't wouldn't it be the fucking um, most amazing development if the Consus religion was the one true religion and their reincarnation cycle Probably. was real and they were actually trying to save the souls of the other races? Um, yeah, but but no, we, the book is like no. If, if, we, these... if we can have if we can have their perspective, if we can have, uh, you know, console members or you know, talking with console people, but but no, no. Well, we try it. It's just guess, but... yeah, we try, but uh. yeah, for the most part, again, it, it's presented as if they're um, quirky, like they're just quirky. They like religion. They're so quirky. Uh, so there is no, like there is no attempt to to fe uh, to foster a deeper understanding with any other race. It's just fight over territory. That's that's all we know. Yeah, that's it's such a silly reason. Honestly, you you can 
you can travel to any point in the cosmos and you just you're fighting for resources why why would you fight instead of races helping each other why would you fight with them well we see because I mean, bumpy was like sweet people yeah there's i mean yes there is limited number of habitable worlds but don't tell me there are so many races that every habitable world is more or less overpopulated. You know, over just this this is total bullshit. It's just absolutely impossible. So, I refuse to believe it. So basically, it's like um, let's have a space marine battle, uh, but the the it's a space marine battle royale. Yeah, but the the uh, basically the, the underlying uh, mythology, the underlying science in science fiction are paper thin and the uh, pretty much there is no like moral compass in this book there is no statement being made about war being good or bad overall um it seems more good actually yeah because it's, uh... our like the main person the main uh, character uh, gets their way by fighting a war so it's kind of implied that he's doing something right no, he's the main character. You know? He's the good guy. Yeah. He's working for the military and he doesn't have a problem he's like, with killing people and uh, killing uh, aliens. The, uh, yeah. Let's not call them people. No, they're not people. They're not people. They're aliens. They're, they're Bambi. Um, it's kind of implied at one point that he's like, whoa, when I'm a general, I, I am going to fight my way from infantry to general and I'm going to change this. Yeah. I can but take so a fucking bet convincing. that this is not going to happen. Like, this is not going to end with everyone singing Kumbaya and being friends when the main character becomes a general. Well, at least it looks like that going, from the perspective of the first book. Yeah. It's going to be more fighting and it's going to be bigger space battles. Yeah, they're going to be peace, you know, when they're going to be peace, when we can enslave all other races. <laughs> That's when we get peace. You know, this is the human way. I started on the second book, and I'm not very far into it. But just to yeah, just to give I'm a framing for what the second book is about, it's about three other races combining together, uh, because otherwise they're too, too weak, we're too big, we're too, too uh -huh. we're, we're so amazing. Uh -huh. So three other races combined uh, their their efforts to kill all humans, basically, and we. Give it up to, to them. To be honest, we deserve this. Kind of, we yeah. absolutely deserve this. <laughs> I mean, of course they're going to combine. And we are attacking home worlds. And they didn't even think about attacking our world because th this is this is extremely, extremely violent. This is invasion. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We, we are not given a reason for why no one has attacked Earth in the book because I think the author, author just didn't care about giving a reason. Um, For, from my point of view, you know, we can actually say that, can you say that maybe the humans were the aggressor? I mean, humans are the aggressor. In yeah. most cases, it seems so. Like, the book makes we don't a big know, we point don't know of being like... what the world was before. The book... You know, before the human, you know, developed, you know, such a good science so that they can fight with the other races. But... If we had a little bit of a history, wh why did this constant fighting started? You know, it, it doesn't make sense yeah. to me. Did, did we did we actually try to communicate with them? Because we, we know their language. Yeah. You know, we have a universal translator. Yeah. H how hard can it be for us to share worlds? Just how? How hard it is? Well, you know, why does a planet have to be either humans or or not humans. Yeah, it's almost as if, like, uh, on one planet you can have people of different ideology. I mean, yeah. do we have a precedent for that? Has that ever happened? Uh, nah. Um, it's it's unreasonable. I mean, to... can, can I can I just say can I just say that uh, I'm going to give an example here with Mass Effect, and I know Mass Effect is not a book. <laughs> you know, it's a game. But it has one of the most amazing sci-fi universes ever. You know, the the story in Mass Effect isn't all that great, especially the ending. It has problems, the story. Yeah. But the universe, the universe created in Mass Effect 
is absolutely amazing. It's it's such a such a great blend between the races. The races are living peacefully. Yes, they had conflicts between each other. Humans have fought uh, other races. I mean, Turians. All of the races have fought the the, the Krogans. I, I know you haven't played. I, 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 have, a basic the grasp, I have a basic grasp. I have a basic grasp of Nostalgia. Yeah. I know but, what happened to the Krogans, for example. And all the races combined when the Krogan decided, you know, we're gonna enslave everyone. All the races combined and they basically crippled this race extremely bad. Yeah. And this is exactly what we deserve. <laughs> you know, yeah, we Krogan. are trying... I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I might seem inhumane here. But this is exactly what we deserve. Yeah. We're invading alien home planets. Yeah. And Our soldiers we deserve are like every race to, to combine and to, so so this is a good premise for the second book. I mean this is good. Yeah, but but do you know what it's going to be like? We're going to stop them and like Yeah, fuck we're them. gonna stop them. I, I said premise. I said premise. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. Uh, the military is going to do its job and get the dirty aliens. Yep. Yeah. Otherwise, we're not going to have any more books. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. You, you can you can say that the war needs to exist in this universe because you wouldn't have books about war if there wasn't war. I just but... wish that the war was better, um, you know, established. Uh, that there was a a better reason for such a large-scale conflict, and and that there were there weren't so many races, uh, that there weren't like dozens of races fighting all at once, because it it just cheapens every individual fight, and it yeah. makes it feel, you know, just like convenient. Fighting really really feels very very kind of a. Do you remember that we fought space spiders? Something that. Yeah. There were space what? spiders in this book. It's like a single paragraph. Again, there are so many throwaway things in this book. Uh, it's a, a paragraph or two about how we went and fought with some sort of space spiders that live in uh, asteroid belts. No, I've actually forgotten about this. Sorry. So yeah, there are so <laughs> many species and none of them is fleshed out. Like, in this book there isn't a single species that's actually fleshed out. The cons are the closest to being fleshed out. And we know that the, the that Bambi eats humans, and that's I guess more than we know about squirrels. So, do, do you hear so, how stupid this sounds? So we have squirrels and uh, lobsters and uh, tiny little men and spiders and yeah, it's it's just everything is. It's so it's so simple. There isn't. Uh, it feels like there there is no race that it's uh, that is at our intellectual level or higher. Well, we excluding the console. Well, we of we kind of look down on the console as well. But yeah, but we look down on the console as well because everyone is an atheist and religion seems like something so backwards yeah. to humans. And for the console, you know. It's it's the way up, and this is very interesting. Yeah. So basically, because they're religious, we're like, ah, eh, those 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 fuckers don't know shit. Okay. Okay. J- just 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 for a second before before I forget it. Okay. So the console idea is that they want the other races to basically grow up. This is as children. Yeah. To to grow up and to reach their level. Yes. But okay, and this this is a this is a great idea. However, what would you do if you were the console and another, in one of those races, one of your children decides to, well, eradicate one of your other children? Just tell me, what would you do? Well, you know, they're fighting, they, they want to keep the world, they want to keep not, the race. Not, not necessarily. I, I want to, to give you a counterpoint to that. Uh, because it seems that they're very much content to let the races fight among each other and let one of them prove uh, to be superior. Because again, I, I will remind you that Konsu 
will fight for honor and that they're yeah, they, they, will fight for they honor. believe that uh, there is honor and uh, spiritual enlightenment in fighting um, which is again kind of a reflection on the altar but that's what but the, the race is about still, but they still use the same technology when yeah because they want to make it fair but they will yeah, let they... Uh, I think they would happily let uh, one race exterminate another race because that's the mm. way they're written kind of I don't know I'm not truly really sure about this I feel like I feel like they see themselves as shepherds uh, as this uh, yeah maybe as shepherds but essentially as the law in, mm. in the universe no again I don't think they, they see themselves as, as the law because they never like uh, overtake planets what they do is yeah, they, they fight to planets. baptize they fight to uh, to bathe the lower races in their blood and and thus help them in their salvation so it's not that they seem they seem see the, themselves as uh, the law they see themselves as the spiritual guiders but they don't I, at least i don't think that they they would uh, actually uh prevent us from killing ourselves um for me i don't think they have any problems w- with us fighting but i i still believe that they would have problems if uh if another race tries to eradicate uh, another race well maybe we can see that in the following books um Although maybe, I feel maybe. like I am probably going to finish the second book because I've started it and once I start the book I tend yeah, to finish I'm it. probably going to finish it also. Although I have to say I'm, I'm not thrilled yeah. about the beginning. Do, do you remember it's that at the start of this conversation slow. we were like, oh, this is a fun book. And the thing is, it's very fun in the moment. Like in the moment, it's uh, just a fun... Because it has it has uh, fast pacing. Yeah. It has a it has a it has a good good story. You know, we're gonna disregard the the whole science in the universe here, but it generally has a, a good storyline and a nice character. You know, yeah. maybe he doesn't exactly act like he should act, but he he's a reasonable man. There is a sense of humor. And the book and the book is fast paced and it's and short. It's written and it's short and it's it's actually nice to read. I mean, I can already recommend the book, even even though we're only talking about the problems of the. book. I can recommend. Honestly, it. I'm not sure I would recommend it. I would say that uh, if someone is looking for a fun sci-fi adventure, this kind of delivers. If someone is yeah, looking for... I think it's okay for, for a fun If someone is looking for adventure. old man's war, this isn't an old man that's fighting a war, honestly. Yeah, uh, this is a marine story. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a space marine story. So if you want to read a space marine story, oh, this is a book for you. It's fun. Um, it it's uh, The action is well, well written. Um, there are enough aliens to queue out there, so it will be well well ahead on that front um but (laughs) if you're looking uh, for a you know something that uh, is more thought evocative that's more um introspective if if you're looking for something when i hear old man's more science when i hear hear old man's war i want something introspective i want something that builds or on um a lifetime of a good experience old man's old man's war sounds like something with a lot more wisdom yes and, and there is no wisdom here. There is absolutely no wisdom here. Uh, there isn't. Really. So, uh, I, I, I'd say I would still recommend it because it's fun. But you know, the the only thing we did is basically bash the book for <laughs> for so conversation. So you know, anyone who's listening, yeah. I mean, and it's if just anyone that. was listening, it's a up fun to book. Here, thank you for staying with us. I yeah. this was supposed to be 30 minutes by the way. Yes. Fuck off. <laughs> I I hope uh that you had some fun listening to us and we'll catch you next time. Well, we haven't talked about the Ghost Brigade. Oh, uh, are we going to talk about it? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> do we have do we have that much time? I mean, we didn't even get to the worst part. I mean, I mean it's we should mention it. 
I think we cannot okay, let's, not let's, mention let's, this. Let's do the worst part just but, like, but let's, quickly. <laughs> yeah, we can't skip the worst part of the book. Now, for all the things that we talked about <laughs> here are true. But this isn't the worst thing in the book. This is not the worst thing in the book. Yes. And I, we, we, we can't skip it. No, we, we can't okay, skip it. But let's let's keep it a little bit shorter. Um, yeah. Okay, let's let's give the cliff notes uh, very quickly. So we established that old people get uh, uh, moved into new bodies that are made from their their DNA. Um, what and the... basically the conscience is transferred from the old body to the new one. Yes. You know, that's already created, and it doesn't have a conscious. Yeah. And they they basically say that conscience is needed for the new body. Yeah. Um, to function. And then... And then it turns out that because some people die in the 10 years, from 65 until 75, so at 65 you give your DNA and at 75 you actually get uh, signed up for the army and then you learn that you had a clone and your mind is moved to the clone. Well, some people die in that time. Um, So what happens is the so-called ghost brigades are basically the clones with basic programming and not your conscious consciousness um so w- they, they actually use parts of different people that have died yeah. to to kind of a scramble something like a conscience yes in them sometimes sometimes it's like that sometimes it's just the original dna basically they're uh experiments yeah. they're child soldiers so they're child soldiers they're child yes. soldiers in the sense that they're they wake up one day and they have the knowledge of how to drive a bicycle and how to fire a gun and they don't have they a sense basically of have self. a lot of knowledge yeah yeah but they have zero they don't have memories and they don't have a yeah. sense of self so they're but they're fully grown they're fully grown yeah. and they at least their bodies are fully grown yes and they start learning about the world basically and get uh, 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 trained in the military so yeah. you remember how, how at the start of the book the military is like well we need 75 year old people because they have the right experience and they can fight for the universe and stuff like that um the best fighting oh. force in the book is the ghost brigade that are literally yeah. four five year old children fuck you and book. They're, they're, fuck, yeah, fuck you book. <laughs> and they're, they're the most uh, genetically advanced uh, they can also use their uh, brain computer, you know, the best yeah. out of all. They have the fastest communication yeah, so because they have grown up with this with this brain. Yeah, they have, they uh, have the, they, this every, computerized brain. Every soldier has a um, enhancement uh, into their new body. That's uh, basically an AI helper that's uh, inside their brain. Uh, because such a nice the, idea, actually. It, such a it, such a good thing. Well, we we've seen that already, though. Yeah. yeah, we've we've seen it, but it's it's such a nice addition to to your new body. Yeah, should I say it's it's nice? But you know, they, they're really proficient in it. So yeah, because they they're born with do, it, and they yeah, they, they don't speak to each other. Yeah, they don't they don't like the sp- uh, using their ma- their you know mouth holes and uh, meat to flap at each other to to speak. They do all things wirelessly. Um, yeah, so because it's faster, it's much faster, s- and they can also transmit emotions. Yeah, through through signal too. Yeah, between because you can link with uh, with a group of people or with one person, and you can transmit emotions to them, and and that's all instant. Yeah, and that's a fun concept, but again, it goes against the entire premise of the book, um, and Absolutely. even so, more. So what happens? Your is best soldier. It's called the old man's war, but your best soldiers are, are actually the the baby soldiers. Yes, uh, the ch- the children. Uh, so. In the beginning of the book, we mentioned that uh, the main character's wife had passed away. What turns out has happened is, of course, I mean, you can see that from a mile away. Of course, uh, because she gave her DNA uh, at 65 when she was still alive, um, they made a child uh, fake soldier out of her. And the main character basically has a... 
a kind of a budding romance with the four-year-old version of his passed away lo- wife. Yeah, well, there is no, there is nothing sexual, but it's, it's more or less kind of implied. The, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of implied. So and uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I, I mean, I can I can understand it to some to some you know perspective, but. It's, it feels so wrong, also. And again, the writing is not helping here at all, because just the same as uh, old people did not feel old, um, young people do not feel young. Like, everyone feels the same fucking age, and just, like, someone is more yeah, irritable. She, she feels like a, she feels like a 20, 20 year old woman, young woman. Yeah. A bit on the aggressive side. Yeah. Maybe. Sure. You know, a bit more impulsive, a bit more emotional. But. But nothing, I don't know. like, not what you would expect a four-year-old to act like. Which is kind of strange that they would let them have strong emotions. I, I I'm don't not sure want to go into can, that, because... Yeah, because if they can control, basically, if they have built the conscience, more or less, I mean, they, they, can, they can basically control everything about this person. So yeah, but let's 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 not go there. Mm. Let's not go there because yeah. I honestly don't know. Um, it's it's not an it, interesting. It goes, yeah, it goes against uh, the whole idea of the book, or at least so far. And and it comes pretty late. It comes about seventy percent in the book. Yeah, around there. Yeah, thereabouts. Uh, it's kind of implied in a way that made it pretty obvious that it's it was going to happen. Uh, like there were uh, signposting for that. There was signposting. Uh, I don't know. I am very much like uh, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't make me happy. <laughs> It doesn't make uh, me happy to see a man extremely, lusting after ex- the four-year-old clone of his dead lo- wife. First of all, first of all, it's extremely convenient. Oh yeah, sure. And again, again, it's something that uh, that happens, you know, because the main character is missing it. And it's it's something that it's not like he's not happy about it, but you know, he mentions it that you know he he would have been here with his wife. And suddenly, oh, well, there it is. Here's your, uh, wife. your wife. She's in a brand yeah, new yeah. body and she has bigger boobs. Yeah, she She's also four year old and you can emotionally manipulate her by showing her uh, your wedding photo and you're showing it Which, to a child uh, that has would, never, you know, lived with how you. How this work? I don't know. It's, it's... not emotionally manip- manipulative at all, right? To show a four year old no. uh, a, a wedding photo and be like, I was your husband. You should be with me. There is another thing at the end, if you remember, when he. <laughs> I think you've already uh, know what I'm talking yeah. about. When you know she has an illusion of his wife. Yeah, she has a hallucination, or like hallucination, a vision, yeah, hallucination. or maybe an actual spirit of her of uh, his life. Wife visited her and was like, "You should love him." And I'm like, yeah. fuck. Off. Why? Why is this here? Well, th- this was absolutely unneeded. Yes. I mean, she she was like, she 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 just, it's it's a it's a it's an okay decision for her to make. You know, let her let her make her own decisions. No, but the spirit of his wife. Yeah, the spirit guided her. Yes. Why? Not creepy Why though. was that needed? He he fucking risked his life. He carried her to the whole battlefield. Yeah, he, she was wounded. And she actually he saved got her. injured. Now, now, let's let's just start with that she got injured because she was talking with him and she was looking at his face. <laughs> this is when she got injured. Yeah, you know they could easily have transmitted communication, uh, you know, with their brains, and uh, you know, uh, watch the surroundings, but because she kind of respects him. Wow. She was using speech. Yes. Because he's like And she she has turned her head to him and didn't see you know the ambush or the attack. Yeah. 
So essentially, he's, well, I'd say 50% fault. Let's say 50% fault for this, if not more. Yeah. That, that, you have, that you got injured. But anyway, he, he makes up for that. You know, okay, he makes so he her. Drags, her, drags her out of the battlefield, uh, gets her to a stasis spot, and later she gets, she will get healed. She recovers. But while yeah, she's, she before she gets to a stasis spot, she get she gets that vision of, oh, uh, I saw your, like my past me, your lo- wife, and she told me to love you, and I'm like, no, I don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone, everyone in the army is an atheist. Basically, religion is spit upon, and suddenly you have some spiritual enlightenment at the end. Is it that? I think it was just the. Uh, yeah. It's... It was just his wife uh, saying the okay to fucking a four-year-old. Okay. Okay, that's even worse. Hey, do you know how brains can trans- transmit emotional information? Do you think that maybe that, that was a vision that he caused? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I don't actually believe that, but... Uh, I could imagine a, a version where that was the case. Um, given the premise that we have, given the technology that we have, and given the fact that she's a fucking four-year-old. If we go into the whole uh, computer, brain computer, brain AI thing... And emotions submitted and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, the thing is that some commanders will be able to manipulate these things, you know. Their AI is going to be more capable and things like that. Which, uh, I'm not going to go into that because it's it's too big. Yeah, Yeah, there'll be dragons. Yeah, they're the dragons there. So anyway, I, I think this is enough for the Ghost Brigade. It's uh the Ghost Brigade is a massive disappointment. We're we're talking make... about the Ghost Brigade in the first book, not the second book, which we have yeah, not yet yeah. finished. The, yeah, we're talking about the Ghost Brigade is a is a unit yes. and is an idea. Yes. It doesn't make any sense. So exactly it... because it doesn't make any sense, the second book is entirely be- uh, about them. Nah. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. Eh, we're gonna finish it, but I'm not sure we're gonna make a, a review of it. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? What else? Well, I think that uh, we've managed to to make it a long, a good long show. <laughs> yes. So to the to to the one person. If still, you have listened to all yeah, that, to the you're one person still listening man. to you. Hi, mom. Point. Hello, I love you. Yeah, I, I love, love you. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess that's it. Well, that's the that's the book. You know, that's old man's war. It's not old. It's only war. <laughs> it's only. It's not old. It's only war. Yes, it's it's. It's, it's not old. It's, it's old only war. Only in sensibility and uh, um, you know. Uh, and the science fiction in it yes. has only fiction. <laughs> <laughs> there's no. <laughs> there's no science. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up. Uh, yeah, let's wrap it up. I think we had a pretty nice discussion. And uh, yeah, this- I hope we'll make this a regular thing. And catch you guys next time. Yeah. Bye.